Rick is Senior Vice President of Microsoft Research uh, Worldwide. Uh, encompassing an organization of over 850 researchers across six labs worldwide. Under Rick's leadership, Microsoft Research con conducts both basic and applied research across disciplines including algorithms and theory, human-computer interaction, machine learning, multimedia and graphics, search, security, social computing, systems architecture and mobility, and networking. His team collaborates with the foremost researchers across the world in academia, research, and government on initiatives to advance the state of the art in computer science and help enhance the future of Microsoft's products. Earlier, Rich, Rich, uh, Rick led research efforts on operating systems, networking and multiprocessors, and authored patents in areas such as data compression, networking, and operating systems. He managed several products that catalyzed Microsoft's developments of interactive TV, uh, directed Microsoft's first e-commerce group, and was a driving force behind its digital media division. Rick was inducted into the National Academy of Engineering in 2003. He received his master's degree uh, in 1977 and doctorate degrees from the computer science, uh, in computer science from the University of Rochester. Uh, and we're honored to have him here today. Rick. Well, it's the uh, person who started Microsoft Research and who has headed it for the last 18 and a half years. You know, I've had the rare privilege of being around for you know, every single inauguration of every research lab and every single major anniversary of every research lab. Uh, I think I'm the only one that has. Uh, interestingly enough, we, didn't even, we never had an inauguration event for Microsoft Research itself. Uh, it was on August 31st of 1991 is when I called Microsoft and said I was accepting the offer to uh, start Microsoft Research. Nominally, the next day, September 1st of 1991, uh, was the beginning of Microsoft Research, but I was just in my office at Carnegie Mellon like I was any other day, uh, so that we didn't really have anything special uh, that happened at the beginning of the organization. But uh, every major anniversary since then I've been involved in, and it, it's a privilege to do that. Now, whenever you're having an anniversary, uh, I think it's, it's worth, especially major anniversary, such as the fifth anniversary of Microsoft Research India, I think it's worth reflecting a bit on, on, on what you're doing and why you're doing it. You know, and I want to talk a bit today about you know, why is it that Microsoft invests in basic research, you know, why do we do what we do, and, and, and to some extent, why, does, why should society um, invest in basic research? Why should countries invest in, in the basic research enterprise? I mean, essentially, the way I look at research, it's really a bet on the future. It's a belief that you are going to have a future, and that you want to have a future, and that you want to invest in the kind of thinking and the people that will allow that future to happen and to flourish. In effect, basic research lays the ground, the groundwork and the, um, the sort of fundamental pieces that are needed for the innovation that's going to drive that future, whether that's the future of a business or an organization, uh, a country, or a, a broad society. I think without investments in basic research, you know, we really impoverish ourselves and we impoverish the future and we put ourselves, frankly, at risk that something will happen uh, that we won't be able to respond to, that we won't be able to adapt, we won't be able to change, and we'll simply go away. Now, for Microsoft, uh, it was in 1990 that Microsoft's board of directors made what I think was a very courageous decision to invest in basic research, to start a basic research organization, you know, that's what they asked me eventually to do, uh, and that became Microsoft Research. And, and I think it was courageous because if you go back to 1990, Microsoft was actually a very small company. There were a few thousand employees. Uh, the company was just reaching a billion dollars in sales. Uh, it wasn't the size company or the kind of company that one would naturally have thought of as doing basic research. And in fact, you know, uh, one of my jokes in, in some of my early talks when I went around to universities to talk about Microsoft Research was that I, I, I always said, well, Microsoft Research is clearly an oxymoron. It's not really clear what Microsoft and research have to do with each other. Uh, and I, I really tried to convey the fact that you know, we were embarking on something very unique uh, in taking on that mission. Now, 
when I started Microsoft Research, you know, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen. But that bet that was made back in 1990, you know, that initial step in 1991 to start Microsoft Research, actually had a profound and transformative effect on the company. If you look at Microsoft today, virtually every product that we produce has in it technology that came out of Microsoft Research. Our products are primarily built with technology that has come out of Microsoft Research. You know, and, and many large parts of Microsoft historically derive from Microsoft Research. So Microsoft is a different company today than it would have been if it had not made those investments. Now, when I came to Microsoft, I had a vision of what I wanted to do that really came from my experiences at Carnegie Mellon University. I had a mission statement in my mind, and Microsoft has, Research has had that same mission statement for its entire history. In fact, I've used this slide in every talk I've ever given about Microsoft Research. Uh, our number one mission has always been exactly what it would have been if we were a university to expand the state of the art in the fields that we do research. And, and there's nothing about that number one mission statement that says anything about Microsoft. It's a statement about the field. It's a statement about making sure that we're at the forefront of the areas in which we're doing research. And the reason that that's the number one mission is because if we don't do that, I really don't think there's anything else that we could be doing that would be of value. We need to be at the state of the art. Otherwise, we can't deliver value to Microsoft or to society as a whole. Now, when we have great ideas, then the second part of our mission statement comes into play. You know, when an idea makes sense, then we work really hard to move that idea into use. You know, and for us, of course, that's most easily done by having an impact directly on Microsoft products. But we also try to get our ideas used more broadly. And Tony Hay earlier was talking about some of the technologies we've developed that are now in broad use uh, in a number of other sciences. They're not Microsoft products, but they're used broadly within the intellectual community. Ultimately, our mission is to make sure there still will be a Microsoft and that there still will be an active technology field and computer science, you know, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and farther out into the future. Now, we're organized really more like a university um, in many ways. In fact, we're really organized historically like Carnegie Mellon University in the mid-1980s because that's the, that was the environment I grew up in. Um, that's where I learned my discipline. That's where I learned what, what I knew how to do. Um, and I took that philosophy and that approach with me uh, to Microsoft when I started Microsoft Research. Part of this is really being open, you know, and, and, and contributing to the, to the peer review literature. Because I, I believe if you're not open intellectually, if you're not competing um, in, the, uh, in the academic, you know, peer reviewed literature, then you're not going to be able to stay at the state of the art. I think that one of the things that distinguishes a real basic research organization uh, from just a great advanced development or advanced technology uh, organization or center is that willingness to compete intellectually uh, with the broad academic community. You we're very aggressive about our publications. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, and we believe in working with the academic community. Um, and in fact, we also believe in contributing back to the academic community you know, and over the entire course of Microsoft research, uh, all, of all the money I've been given by Microsoft to do my job, 15%, uh, actually more than 15% of that, has gone directly to universities around the world in supporting students, in supporting faculty, in supporting basic research and infrastructure. Now, I think, frankly, because of our mission statement and because of the way we've chosen to do our work, because of our approach to basic research, we've been able to attract an incredibly strong group of people. You've met a few of them already today. Uh, you know, we have so one of those decorated, if you want to think of it as faculties, um, in the field of computer science. 
And we have more members of the National Academy of Engineering than the entire University of Washington. Uh, we have, you know, frankly, we have more PhDs uh, than, than Brown University. Uh, so it, it, it's a tr I think because of that, we've been able to, to be very, uh, attract a great group. And we've built an organization that today is one of the largest basic research groups um, in the field of computer science. We now have over 850 PhD researchers working in six research labs around the world. And, and to put that in perspective a little bit, you know, that means that almost 1% of all Microsoft employees are PhD researchers working within Microsoft Research. So I think that's a tremendous investment by Microsoft in the future. Now I said earlier that our number one mission is really to expand the state of the art, to move uh, sort of the intellectual boundaries uh, uh, out and, and to have an impact on those. Well, one of the ways we measure that is the same way a university would, which is what is our impact on the peer-reviewed literature? You know, and if you look today, Microsoft Research is actually one of the number one publishing organizations in the world in the field of technology. And many of the top conferences today will have as many as 30% of the papers coming from Microsoft Research. I mean, the most recent operating systems conference, for example, that was held uh, last year, uh, Symposium on Operating System Principles, had 32% of the papers with an author from Microsoft Research. I mean, these are extraordinary numbers. Um, and I think it's a statement about, you know, our belief in contributing, you know, our uh, intellectual ideas, you know, to the broad community. Microsoft Research India has been very much a part of that. And, I, and, and uh, this is a slide Anandan used earlier. But I just want to emphasize that, you know, the same kind of philosophy that we brought to all the other research labs within Microsoft has been really part of Microsoft Research India. And they've garnered a, a tremendous amount of attention as a research organization in their own right in just the five years that they've been in existence. Now, I talked about working with the academic community, and we believe that's particularly important. Um, we run one of the largest PhD internship programs I think that's ever been seen. Uh, we have over 1,000 PhD interns working at Microsoft Research uh, in one of our labs around the world every year. Uh, to put that in perspective, I think we have more PhD student hours uh, at Microsoft Research than, than virtually any university in the world has. Uh, so it gives you a sense of, of the, the level of interaction we have with students uh, that, that are part of that research community. But we also have huge numbers of visitors, visiting professors. You know, uh, many of our, our researchers uh, advise students, they teach, uh, and they are themselves very much involved in the educational process uh, around the world. It's just a slide kind of giving you a sense of, uh, you know, all the, the different sort of activities we have going on in terms of locations. We have our six uh, research labs, uh, but we also ha are, have a number of joint research efforts going on with organizations around the world. For example, uh, we have a joint research lab with, with INRIA, the, the French IT research organization uh, just outside of Paris. We have a joint supercomputer center uh, with, uh, in Barcelona, with the University of Barcelona. We have a systems and computational biology center in Trento, Italy. Uh, we have uh, infer, you know, innovation technology centers uh, in Aachen, Germany, and in Cairo. Uh, we support a, uh, a joint um, uh, uh, research or, uh, uh, activity with the top universities in Latin America. Uh, and so we call, it, we call it the Virtual Institute. And that really brings universities in Latin America together. And we do that jointly with those universities um, and also with, with uh, help and funding from the Organization of American States and the World Bank. We have a number of joint research labs in, uh, in China, in Korea, in Japan, uh, in Australia. Again, the goal for us has been to reach out and be part of the broader academic community. And Anandan already mentioned some of the work that we're doing here in India specifically to help build that sort of intellectual community um, and add to the, uh, the, the scientific uh, research efforts in the field of computer science in, in India. The second part of our mission statement was really to have an impact not just have great ideas, 
but make sure that those great ideas have an impact you know, uh, on people. Uh, and, and again, th there's been a tremendous effort over the years in bringing our ideas into products and into use in the broad community. Uh, this, this is just a list of a few things. Uh, this, is, this is a larger list. Uh, but, but, but the actual list of technologies we've transferred into Microsoft products runs into the thousands. Uh, and, and as I said before, virtually every product has been impacted in a significant way. And many of our products historically derive from Microsoft research directly. Now, I, I've talked a bit about sort of you know, what we do and why we do it. Uh, now I want to talk about you know, why should Microsoft want this, you know? And there are lots of reasons why you can imagine it's valuable to invest in basic research. You know, one of the things you could be saying is, well, you know, look at all those technologies, that intellectual property, the patents that Microsoft Research produces. That's a value. So isn't that why you should be doing basic research? And I think, you know, especially for many people in government, I think for many companies, frankly, that's why they invest in basic research. They say, look at, the, look at all the technologies we're going to get from research. That's what we want, right? And, and while I think that's, that's great, you know, we certainly do produce um, a lot of the intellectual property that Microsoft has. We, we certainly do have an enormous impact on Microsoft products. I, I think that, that, that that's really more a consequence of having a basic research group. Uh, it's more of an outcome from a, a well-run research organization, but it, I don't think it's why you should do basic research. It's simply a great thing that happens when you do. Now you could say, well, you know, a research group is a great problem-solving organization. You, you bring us problems, we love solving problems. I love solving problems. I love it when somebody comes to me with this, uh, a, a really hard problem, and I can work on it, and I can come up with a solution. I think a lot of researchers, that, that's something they really enjoy doing. And I think that's a wonderful consequence of having a basic research group, but I don't think that's why you should have one. You know, a lot of people say, well, shouldn't a basic research group be, you know, it's a, it's a great um, early warning system. You know, you guys are listening to what's going on, you see what's happening in the world, you can tell us, you know, we people in the product groups, you can tell us what's going to happen, you know, and, and we'll learn from that and we'll be able to respond. And I think, again, that's a great value. But I would argue that the main reason why you should have basic research, and I think this is true for a company, I think this is true for a country, I think this is true for a society, is, is not just because of the outcomes, the sort of routine outcomes of research, but frankly, it's to give you the agility to survive when something happens or something changes in the world. If you go to the writings of Vannevar Bush, who is one of the, the, the people most influential in helping to create the National Science Foundation in the United States. You know, when you read his writings that led to that, you know, one of the things he says is, you know, it's important to invest in, in basic research because we don't know what the future is going to bring. We, we don't, th there could be another war. And of course, the United States had just been through a major war where research was very, very important in winning that war. Right? There could be another war. There could be a, a, a famine. There could be a disease. You know, we need to have the, the ideas. We need to have the people that will let us respond to that and will let us survive it. For a company, you could say that there might be another competitor, a new competitor that comes uh, into, into business or, or new technology or change in the business climate. You need to be able to survive that. You know, if you look at the history of the technology field, most of the companies uh, that have been in the technology field over the years don't exist anymore. Most of the companies that were Microsoft peers, in fact, virtually all the companies that were Microsoft's peers in 1991 when Microsoft Research was started are gone. Right? Microsoft has been able to adapt, has been able to change, has been able to survive and thrive in part, I believe, because we've had the agility to change when we needed to do that. And Microsoft Research has given Microsoft that ability. Now, if you look at the impact of, of research on Microsoft, it's been profound. You know, uh, Sean mentioned earlier, you know, the, what became the Windows Media Division 
the interactive media division at Microsoft and, and the, uh, eventually became part of our inter entertainment and devices division today, you know, was a group I started in 1992 doing, doing streaming media and interactive TV. We built that into a product team, spun the, 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 that group out in 1996, you know, and they became a core component of the company. Uh, the fact that Microsoft was able to enter into the home entertainment business with the Xbox was because of the work that research had done, both in the interactive media area, uh, but also in the 3D graphics area and computer, computer vision areas and, and in the software research areas, where we were able to bring technology to bear that allowed Microsoft to enter those businesses and, and enter that business successfully. You know, back when Microsoft originally announced it was going to create a game console, most of the industry analysts and pundits said basically, you know, Microsoft can't possibly compete in that space. In fact, they didn't even believe an American company could compete because they thought that was just a Japanese business. You know, there were only Japanese companies, you know, doing that work. Well, we've been able to compete, we've been able to thrive and, and be enormously su successful in that space. And I think it's, it's because of the investments we made in basic research. Um, I started the first e-commerce group in the company. All of our data mining facilities in SQL uh, and uh, many of the technologies in Windows Server come out of Microsoft Research. And those are, by the way, the fastest growing businesses in the company and make today more money than our, than our client Windows business makes. Uh, the entire Windows development process has been dramatically altered by the use of proof technologies and program analysis technologies from Microsoft Research. And most recently, our entry into the uh, search business with Bing uh, has been based ex almost exclusively on technologies that have come out of our research group. And don't, I don't, I'm not going to go into detail on these. Uh, I suggest you go out and use Bing and take advantage of it because it really offers a very different approach uh, to the problem of finding information and solving problems on the internet. And, and again, many of the technologies, things like categorized search, instant answers, uh, the, uh, tech, the, the new technologies we brought to bear for uh, being able to find images and, and, and uh, categorize and manage images, uh, the work that we're doing in, uh, in, in you know, sort of, you know, data mining opinions and doing opinion ranking. I mean, all these technologies have come out of work uh, done with Microsoft Research. You know, all of this sort of augmented reality work that's now going into Bing, again, has come out of the work we've been doing there as well. You know, we've been working in things like uh, building hard, new kinds of hardware. Microsoft Surface is an example of that, which is a technology that literally came directly out of our research organization into our products. And most recently, uh, an example of this is something we announced uh, this last year in, in uh, and we just showed off at, at, uh, at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas uh, uh, just at the end of the year, which is our Project Natal. And I'm just going to show a quick video that really talks about the, uh, the way in which research and product uh, have worked together you know, for Project Natal. Until now, if you wanted to measure the movements of parts of somebody's body, you'd need some kind of a device like a remote or a marker. But now, with Natal, the body itself is the input device. Project Natal allows you to control your character, your games, your entertainment experiences through movements of your body. This is the dream of every researcher, taking their blue skies research and seeing it being shipped to millions of people. Folks in my group come from all walks of life from musicians to artists to algorithmic developers to researchers to product people. And the way that we incubate is essentially to actually embrace all of these different work styles. The first time that you discover something new that you love. That's what the first moment was like when I walked up to the sensor, gestured, and saw that come to life on the screen. We knew we had something when we took the first demos that were using the skeletal tracking technology and we actually had people using every part of their body. Not only were they smiling, but they said, hey, I was actually there. One of the brilliant things is that the 3D camera for the first time is going to be available. That gives you the three-dimensional information about the distance to every point on the body. But it doesn't actually give you an interpretation of where the limbs are, what the angles of the joints are. So for that, we need to build software. What Natal does is it evaluates effectively trillions of body configurations every frame. We've made it 
do that 30 times a second. The person playing with Project Natal doesn't need to change their actions or change their behaviors to fit the technology. Natal technology actually changed itself to fit the way that the player plays. I think this is one of the most successful applications of, of machine learning and computer vision that's ever been deployed. We should absolutely expect the unexpected. It's 50% hardware, 50% software. The beauty is that we have the ability to tie those together in a magical experience. From the technology side, our goal is just to make that absolutely seamless. You act, it understands. The idea of using your body as a controller, the idea of controlling things with your voice, the idea of connecting with players like we'd never connected before. Suddenly, that white sheet of paper in front of me was filled with ideas. The opportunity is to delight consumers to make our art form more accessible to a broader audience. We've given you a ticket to the coolest party and given you a megaphone to shout out and to interact with the people around you. So, you know, I, I, you, you talk to the researchers um, that, are, that are working on that particular project with the product team, the Project Natal product team, and, and you, you quickly realize they're having the time of their lives. I mean, they've, this is you know, their lifetime work in basic research, suddenly being able to get out there and, and to have potentially a very significant impact on the way people uh, entertain themselves, but, but potentially the way a lot of other things are done you know, with computers. I mean, the notion that a computer isn't just something that you interact with through a, through a, a, a handheld device, uh, but literally... Uh, it, it has some of the same senses that you have uh, and can respond to you in that way. I think that's really exciting and that's, that's a, uh, something that, that I think is a, a great example of what you can do. Now, we're not just having an impact on Microsoft. I think we're also having an impact on society. And I'm not gonna really going to go into a lot of detail on this, but if you go to the research.microsoft.com website, you can find out you know, all the great work that we're doing you know, that, that really reaches out well beyond Microsoft into the broad society, impacting things such as the environment, you know, energy, personalized medicine, Tony mentioned that earlier, uh, the scientific community, and education, coming up with new ways of teaching people, uh, especially teaching very young children, principles of engineering and computer science. So uh, I'm going to end with that, but I, I'll just reiterate that what I think is the key point, you know, as we as we arrive now at our, at our fifth anniversary of Microsoft Research India. And, and that is that the reason we're doing this is because we believe in the future. We believe that basic research is important to make sure that we'll always be here in the future, that we'll be able as a company, that we'll be able as a, as, as a society uh, to respond to change when we need to respond to change because of the ideas and because of the people that we have. Thank you.